In this video, we're going to get started on creating your midterm design project based on the golden number. First, go to the Adobe Introductory Tutorials at the top of the content area in Blackboard and click on the Intro to Adobe Photoshop CC and make sure to carefully study the five modules here under the Photoshop Get Started course. Then in Blackboard, we will open up the folder to the midterm design project and the golden number. And today we'll get started on setting all of this up. First thing we want to do before you begin the actual work is to view Phi's The Limit. It's a BBC video on the golden ratio. After you take a look at that, then you will go down to the bottom of the folder and you'll notice uh, these different links that will teach you how to construct a grid based on Phi. This is not required, but it's just a way to show you, give you additional information on how this is done. The template for your design project was created based on these sites, the information on these websites. Next, before we begin, make sure you click on the design template for midterm design project and download that onto your desktop. Then also, we're going to use this as an example, click on the dancer photo for the Phi Design tutorial. Now while we're doing that, let me go over with you these examples of what you will ultimately be creating. Here's example one based on the template that you are downloading. And here you will notice that there is the brand, the name of the product, and here are subheads about the product, and then here are some smaller body copy type that will describe the product. Uh, these, with this one, you can see that the designer was uh, very good at creating the colors to uh, harmonize through the whole design. And she did that based on the images that she created. Next, let's take a look at this one. This one was done uh, with uh, the, his subject was a whiskey bottle. And he was the one who creatively came up with these terms. And again, I want you to notice how the whole design works well together. And it was all based on one image of Jack Daniels. Again, make notice how well the colors worked in this project. The final one is a peacock. And here you can see the three different levels of typography. You have your main title, and the main title is associated with the silhouette of the peacock. Over here, there were words describing, and we can call this your second level of type. And then in these areas here, it shows you a third level of type. Usually it's the smaller type. In each case, you are responsible for designing the typography, the color, the size, the alignment, and uh, making sure it harmonizes, it goes well with everything in your design. Those are examples of the final project. Now, let's go into Photoshop and go to File, New, and hit print, then under the width, make it 17 inches and the height 11 inches. And the resolution, we're going to lower it to 150. The reason why we're doing this is because uh, this is was originally done as a template. And 
the resolution, if we were to keep this resolution, it would really create an, a, a very large document. And at this point, we don't need to uh, slow your computers down. Uh, we don't want to have any uh, troubles with it being too large. So 150 should be okay. The color mode is RGB, background contents are white. And hit create. Once you have this up, you make sure that the layers panel is showing and this should come in as your background layer. We're going to next go to file and you're going to place embedded and you're going to locate where you placed the template which is called my favorite and that should come Okay, here it is, my favorite.pdf. So I'm going to double click that. And when this comes up, it's telling you that it's going to open as a smart object. And you say that's fine, you hit OK. And your template comes in on a layer on top of the background layer. Now, take your mouse and center the template like I did here. Once you have located it, then hit return or enter on a PC. And you'll notice that it is now on its own layer. However, this icon in the layers panel indicates that it is a smart object. So what we must do is right click it and rasterize the layer. For those unfamiliar with this, what we just did is made the image on my favorite layer. This is, uh, is now our pixels on that layer. If we had kept it as a smart object, it would have prompted us to open up another document to work on an in, uh, uh, the, in a separate instance, in a separate uh, document. So at this point, most of the lessons that we're doing in this course, you will rasterize the layer, which means make it into pixels on its own layer. It's, not a, it's no longer a vector object, which was placed on top before. So now we have the layer, my favorite. Now the next thing I want you to do is open up the the dancer image that you downloaded so i'm going to open mine up right there and with with this one all you need to do in, in photoshop is go to file open and locate where you place the dancer and here again we have the background layer so what we're going to do to get this thing started is take your mouse and place it on the background layer and drag it to the new layer button. So this creates a background copy. This is a, a habit that I like you to get into because it preserves the original data down on the background layer and here in the background copy layer you can do whatever you'd like with it and you're not destroying any of the information uh, in the image. So for this one we want to, we're going to take this image and we want to bring it into our document that we just created. So take your move tool up here, put your mouse on the image and press down, drag it up to the tab of the new image, keep your mouse pressed down, bring your mouse down onto the image and let go. Now, as you can see, we successfully transferred the dancer image onto our template so that we can begin our design. Now, at this point, I'm going to double click background copy, which is the name that it came in as, double click it and name this layer. Uh, let's call this dancer main and hit return which fixes the name 
uh, make sure that you always name your layers in Photoshop and in all of these programs and it's very important for your workflow to be able to uh, identify all your layers all right now I'm going to go back to blackboard for a moment and show you where we are at we just you all viewed the phi's the limit and uh, we I'm giving you the dancer template which is going to be your own image that is number two we placed the design template we just did that now we're going to create your phi based design starting with the master photograph and let's go back to Photoshop and we'll, we'll do that so here we have the dancer so the basic idea is to see if you can get your image to fill up a block and let's go we'll talk about this block right here which says photo this is just a good starting point so the first thing I'm going to do since this is my main photo I want to make sure that I preserve that so I'm going to hold my finger on the option while I'm in the move tool and I'm going to drag a copy of this over here now as you can see it gave me another layer which I, I copied the dancer main layer now I'm going to hide the original dancer main because we'll I'll be going back to that in order to fill up the other photo areas. Now, uh, I'm going to turn this off, the original one off. Now, this one, uh, Dancer Main, and just so I can identify where I'm going to put this, I hope, I'm going to double click in here. I'm going to say Center. I'm going to pull this Center up. Just so that I know that this is going to be in, right in there. Now, uh, in Photoshop, in order for us to do this as quickly as possible, bring your image down here and go to the opacity and the layers panel, open up the slider and lower the opacity down so that you can see through at the grid underneath. Now, this way you can select your with your image and we right now we have to scale this up so that she this whole thing fills in that space in there now it's not going to be perfect but I'll just show you this is the basic technique on how to do it uh, now some of you may have a bounding box on here indicating that you can scale uh, I don't so I'm going to go command T and that puts the transform dialog box on it. I'm pointing to the right upper anchor point and I'm going to hold my finger on the shift and the option at the same time which keeps it in proportion and, 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 and enlarges it around the center like so. So as you can see I want to take a look and get it so it's as close to this as possible now I'm releasing my mouse first then I take my fingers off the keys now I'm going to take my lower arrow my nudge key and I'm going to tweak this down so that she is going to fit into that space not too bad okay. now depending on the nature of your subject you have the ability the flexibility to do whatever you want to fill these up. Many students find that their subject is more squarish so that they enlarge this and it fills up these two modules that say photo. All right, so right now I my sizing is okay and I'm going to hit return which applies the transformation. Okay, now uh, since I have determined this is going to be okay I'm going to take my rectangular marquee and like so and select around the dancer at this point I'm going to stop and 
save where I have gone so far. 